Dave here, how are you? I'm hoping I'm pushing the right buttons here because I'll tell you what, uh, yesterday was Australia Day and I made a bit of a spectacle of myself. Apparently, I thought I was going fine, but other people tell me not the way that it came across on our side, Dave. All right. Um, I think everything's good. Okay, thanks, Ken. Uh, G-Shock Jock, I really enjoy your channel and all of your knowledge. It's not going to be a lot of knowledge today, guys. I tell you what, I'm going to struggle through. I'll read what I've got here. Um, Aspire CAD designing for CNC. Now, I'm only very early days with CNC, as everyone knows. So I'm going to take you through some of my stumblings, is what I could say. Aspire I like, uh, which is all put out by Vectric. And it's the same as VCarve. Basically, Aspire has got more bells and whistles. VCarve and VCarve Pro would probably do most people, unless, of course, you want to get into 3D stuff. Now, the thing I like about um, Vectrix software is that it's very easy to use. It's just like drawing on a piece of paper. You know, it's, it's two-dimensional. And then the third dimension comes in when you're actually telling the tool paths, the depth of the cut's going to happen, that kind of stuff. So I, I really like Vectric because, as I say, it's just like drawing on a piece of paper. And one of the other things about it is, it's the same as the CNC. You have to get, off, get away from the situation where you're actually doing it with a pencil or holding a router and moving around. You have to totally trust what's happening in here and the programs to be able to utilize these things. And for me, who's been using hand tools and power tools all my life, that was one of the biggest hurdles. But I've got over that. And I'll tell you what, it's well worthwhile doing it if, you're, um, if you have an interest to want to expand your knowledge and, and what you do. Now, as I say, yesterday was Australia Day in Australia, obviously. And uh, we had quite a large family gathering here and uh, one thing led to another. Were, everyone had a great day. But uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't know about you guys, other people that, in Australia, whether or not you uh, celebrated as hard as I did. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Uh, so if I'm not jumping around all over the place this morning and, and looking very energetic, you understand. All right. Let me have a look. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick read. Um, morning, John. Brian, morning all. Stephen Lee, good day, everyone. Stephen, hangover. Yes, Stephen. Wallbank, a little bit. I did have a few bevies, Zane. Yes. So I am very secondhand. And uh, <laughs> no, no, I didn't even have any port yesterday, which is rare for me. Uh, Brian sure looks like a painful trip. <laughs> you're talking today um, yeah no uppercase thank you very much John okay let's let's move on let's move on to the show uh, oh one thing you know I, I had Zoe in here a couple of months ago and uh, she brought in this money box that she'd made and won a little prize for it and she's showing some interest she made this and gave it to me how cool is that I love it I think she probably cut it all out on a scroll saw. And I am stoked in the irregularity of the, the letters. It's cool. I'm very, very... I was really touched when she gave that to me yesterday. That's, that's when I can still remember things. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me have a look here. Hi from Germany, from Norbert. And Ken sounds like he had too much of this. Yes, he did. Okay, so... Australian Army Memorabilia Box Giveaway. Now, I've got a fair few people who are patrons to the channel uh, or on Patreon, Patreon and also subscribers to the channel. And I have a few people like to offer things to give away. Now, we've had Hilton has offered to give some of the bowls away or a bowl away and gave me a couple. And that's fantastic. And I'm very appreciative of it when it happens. Now, I had from Peter and Wendy from We Us and Co. And there'll, there'll be a link down in the description box below here. 
for these Australian Army memorabilia boxes and rolls that they make. Now, you'll notice on the competition this week, or the giveaway, that it's only open to ex or current Australian Army personnel. The reason being is it has the actual rising sun on it. And these aren't things that would just be given away to anyone. So you will have to give me proof that you are either current army or ex-army to be able to go into this. This is going to be a very, very small um, portion or, or um, sample, should I say, of people who are watching at the moment. Very, very small. Now, we're doing it because this time we're going to do it. I, I, I even thought about, you know, Peter's offer and I thought, you know, you know what? I really do think it's a great idea because he puts a lot of work into it. And uh, he's going to give five in total. So one will be given away this weekend because it's Australia Day. And I thought there's a good tie in there. And when Anzac Day comes up, we'll have a look at the other four. So keep your ears and eyes open for that because they are very, very, very well made. Very well made. And they just magic. Have a look at the video. Not yet. Wait until we get, uh, get through it all. Uh, at the end of the show and have a look there and jump in and apply. But it's got to be Army. You can't be Navy or Air Force. It's got to be Army. This is a very small sample, but I think it's going to be fantastic. Next one. One, two, three blocks. What are they? Well, here you go. This is a picture of something that John Lafferty has made up. Now, John, I said to John, what am I going to do with it? And... He said, well, it's used to transfer a line from one surface to another. And the way that it's done, I'm moving things around all over the place here. There we go. I've got this off. This is a one, two, three. So it's one thickness, two across, and three along. So these things are... Um, if I want to, I haven't even got any demos set up. I'm a debacle today. I used these things when I was building the swing set at the moment, which is all finished and we're just painting it. So it's not too far off down the track. We'll do the video on it. Uh, when, I was dom when I dominoed the rails into the posts, so there's derby posts and two dominoes go into these posts and, and the rails go in, I... I say, here we go, a bit of a demo here. Say this is the rail and this is the post, like so. That, I was going to dominate that joint. So what I do is I lay this down, and I've got the dominoes going in there and in here. But I needed to find out on this one, I had to transfer the center points from there up to here. And I did it using a one, two, three block. So these are perfectly square. So... You can do it with a piece of timber, or you can do it with these things. Actually, I think I did do it with a piece of, t <laughs> piece of timber. But you get, you understand what I'm saying? This is, uh, this is pretty cool. Now, uh, John went, went some extra steps with these. He made a th one, three, five. Now, he's put them at 32 millimeter centers, these holes. So it's, it's now a 96, and that should work perfectly, it does as a matter of fact, with the grid on the Stanton bench. So you can put a, uh, a dog in, like so, and then put one of these anywhere. Now I need you guys, here's what I, here's what I want you to do. I need you to... Um, Give me information as to what you could use these for. And to expand on that a bit more, John is not going to give a set of these away, but he's going to give one of the starter sets away in Australia for the bench and also a starter set in the States because we're going to start, or John has asked Luke over in the States at TBD CNC because he's got himself a 3D printer now, he's going to start manufacturing all the parts over there as well to make it quicker. So John hasn't got to post things for, across the ocean, be more economical. 
as well for everyone. So it's great. So we're going to do next week, we're going to do, so this week we've got the Australian memorabilia case, and then next week we're going to do two sets of starter packs of the yellow box shed dog set, which is fantastic. Now, if I'm not making a lot of sense or it's not being as fluent this week, I'm sorry. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, oh, I'm going to have a quick read. You need to put out behind when you are casting. Yeah. Uh, look, I think I probably will. Maybe, maybe somewhere up here, hanging from up, up there somewhere. That'd be lovely. Um, Dave, you're a wreck. <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, Barry, great work with Path Sis. Um, Gary Hawkins, good day. Good morning. Uh, John Larry, you can use the bigger one for clamping. Yes. Yes. Now, this is what I want. I want people to let me know what they reckon would be a good idea. John has made all of these interconnectors for it, which is absolutely fantastic. So, I'm unscrewing it. Now, these are all M8. So... And they're a good, good tight fit. Now this one is just three at 32 mil center holes and they're all tapped. So I can use this as a connector in any of the, the three different planes. And he's also made them as a two or a single hole post. So there's a lot of things here. Now you were saying you could use them for clamping. If I was putting something together, this is dead square. That's all there is to it. I could put a Festool uh, lever clamp in either side, straight down inside, and pull it up tight. And then I've got a really good reference for doing a square corner. I could put it down on the bench and lock it down via the dogs like this. That's in. And this one here. That's, that's, that is solid. And then I could put things either side and clamp to it. And away I go, perfect square corner. And I'll probably never get this one out now because it's that, that tight. Oh, I'm going to get that out after the show. I couldn't be bothered at the moment. Uh, Dave, as they are perfectly square, they would be great for intricate glue-ups like boxes. Exactly right. Um, Stephen, hi. I'm not going to keep up with the chat today either. Uh, John Lafferty just isn't able to turn his brain off. Hate to see what it'd be like when he's off all the drugs. Exactly right. He's I'll post a collection of one, two, three block photos in the group later today. Oh, okay, on the live stream. Oh, sorry, on the on the Dave Stanton live stream group on Facebook. Where are we up to? A quarter past, and I'm still standing. All right, all right. Uh, tape measures. Some interesting ideas. Before we get off that, what do you think about the, uh, the idea with these memorabilia boxes? I'm going to show you a picture of them when I can get this mouse to work. Over here. There we go. This is one of the memorabilia boxes on the inside. And as I say, Wendy does a magic job on the inside with all of the, uh, with all the velvet. And then on the outside, as they're saying, because it's got the, the rising sun on it, it cannot be given to just anyone. It must be army, and it must be Australian army. I reckon they're beautiful. So it's just something a little bit different. But, you know what? Why not? I reckon it's very, very generous of Peter and Wendy to do that for us. Uh, not a hard one this week. All you have to do is go to their website, and I think I ask you why they got into doing this kind of stuff. Um, Peter has never been in the army, but uh, have a look. Have a look, see what you think. And there's all sorts of different things. That I've got to get this out. So I'm going to use one of the M8 uh, bolts as a handle. Here we go. Oh, jingos, that's tight. Yeah, the tolerances, <laughs> they're unbelievable. I'll take the other one out, see if I can get it out first. There out she comes. That means I can use the, the block and everything to get this one out. Oh. When I get all the way down, I can turn it. Yeah. 
You ever have that feeling that when you're doing something, you think, oh, I hope this doesn't end up pear-shaped. There we go. Ta-da! And out it comes. They're beautiful. All right, pop those down there. We're going to have a look at some tape measures and different rules. I don't know how many tapes or rules you've got in your workshop, but I'm just going to throw them here on the table. <clears throat> that one there, that one there, that one. And I'm going to discuss a few of them. All right, starting off with the one that I had, you know, for many, many years. This is, used to be a three foot rule when I was an apprentice. Now it's a meter, 39 point whatever inches. Um, <clears throat> it does take a little older. Uh, here we go. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit here. They are fantastic boxes, Barry. Joseph, very nice and great tribute to our heroes. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, I like them. I like them and I reckon it's fantastic that they've done it. All right, here we go. Ruler. Standard rule. Now, as an apprentice, one of the first things I was taught how to do was to open this up in three sections and never have any of the rule point back towards you. It always had to be opening out. And I don't know if I can remember how to do it, but I think, I think it goes like this. Well, there you go. That's in, that's in two. It's not, a, it's not easy. Give it a shot, see how you go. Anyway, this is all of my rules and tapes. I try and have both measurements on it, metric and imperial. They're very easy to, to run with. Uh, and if I'm, if sometimes I think imperial, sometimes I think metric. And, you know, if I need to do a quick conversion, I'll grab a ruler or a tape and pull it out and have a look. Now, these ones are, now that I've said all of them, <laughs> metric and imperial. You're a shocker. This one is totally metric. Of course it is. It's festival. They don't like to do anything that's imperial. It's a two meter rule and it's pretty, pretty cool. That one was sent to me by a subscriber from in Germany. Or Switzerland, maybe, I think it was. But uh, they're very handy as well, two meters. Now we get into the tape measures. So this is a standard tape measure I've got, which is a, uh, I think it's an eight meter. It's, again, metric and imperial. Makes it so easy. This one's been with me for a long time and you know, it gets a lot of abuse. Sometimes you have a tape and you think, hmm, I've had this for a long, long time. And the reason being, that it's still working is because you've lost it. It's been hiding in a cupboard and you go and buy another one. And you get out and you think, oh, this is a good value tape. Look how long, well it's lasted. Well, it's probably only used, been used on maybe two or three jobs and then got lost and then found it again when I did a tidy up. So that's a Lufkin. Um, then we've got the DeWalt, which is the one that I, has got the unbelievable reach on it. This thing can just keep on going out and out and out. That's 2.8 meters. Let's go until it cracks it. 3.4, four meters. I'm gonna walk back and I'll show you the length that that thing is out. That's four meters. There you go. That's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now, one of the things about these tapes is that they automatically recoil. You've got a, a stopper there if you want to stop it from going too far and smashing. So I looked at that and I thought, this is, that's nice. But in Aldi last week, I bought this tape and I thought, oh, I like it. This has got a few features. It doesn't retract unless you push the button. And then it retracts. Now for a workshop, this is fine. This is also metric and imperial. But when I was using it on site during the week, I would reach it out and hook it over and then it didn't automatically tension up for me. And then I realized these ones for outside for over a greater distance are far superior. And then that made me think, maybe that's why these were only five bucks. 
I bought two because I thought, wow, what a bargain. How cool is this? Five dollars, grab two. So I did, but as I say, I'll use them in here. I won't use them outside. The other good thing is, right on the end, they've got magnets. There's two magnets there. And they work very well. Let's see if I can... They're on the box over there. You can see it's pulled tight. It's, it's magnetic. If I let go, see, nothing happens. I have to actually make it recoil. Um, as I say, for in here, it's going to be fine, but not on site. Then I got a little uh, Bessie, which is metric again, of course, German, uh, which is very handy. It's nice. Then I've got the tiny Festool. It's a three meter, which is <laughs> it's. The rotten thing's got Imperial and Metric on me. There you go. So we can lock that. But this one is a really, really, really handy tape. Now, do you know why? Because up the top here, I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little window. Now, that window has got a cursor in it right in the middle. Let's switch uh, cameras, see if I can get it a bit better. There we go. There's a little window up here. Now it's focusing on things down over here. Let's move those away so it can't see it. See that window? Turn it up the right way. So that window is saying 64 millimeters, which is the width from there to there. So I can use this, and as I pull the tape out, and I'll see if I can get it to so you can see it. It's uh, oh, it doesn't stay locked on. Ah, there we go. It's it's just a press fit. Anyway, so from here to the back there is two hundred and thirty. Pull it up closer again. 231, 232, whatever it is, which is great. Now, the other good thing about this tape is I can do radiuses with it. On the end, there's a tiny little pin. And from here to, I'll find it, just here, there's a little hole for you to put a pencil in. And so I can use that to... If I was to put that there, this isn't a great demonstration, but it'll give you an idea. I can use that to scribe an arc. If I put a pencil through that little hole here, I can create an arc. The length that it's showing me in that little window at the top. That's a great little tape. Not a very strong tape, but it, for the function it does, they're fantastic. Then I've got this little quickie tape. This is also another little, uh, this is a BMI tape. Now, the good thing about this one is it folds flat down. See that? So, just here, the tape is actually touching. Like the measurement is right on it. So, if I was to get a pencil, and I'll get a, get a pencil. So, say so I wanted 150 millimeters. Well, that's it right there because you can see the pencil's right on the 150. I'll bring this in even closer and see if we can get it. I can only get in so close to the to the bench. Okay, so 150, the tape is folding down where all of the other tapes are folding up. Let me see if I can get it better. So I have to roll the tape over to be able to get a contact where this one, both sides are touching straight away. So it's a, it's a handy tape, very handy. All right, what are we going? I'm going to do a little bit of a read. I'll bring this camera around to there, flip her up a little, and then switch cameras over to the main one. And there we go. All right, have a quick read. 
Okay, John Lowry, I like uh, how they've got a rule on the back of some of the tapes. Michael Ortis, I like fast cap tapes. So it must be an old Festool tape. It could be an old one. Uh, respects Wood, if only you had one of those tapes handy to measure your drinks last night. Well, yes. Uh, though I heard Festool started doing things in Imperial for the US market. Oh, that's possible. That is possible. Uh, Yanis, okay, see you later. David Lucy, that's interesting. John Lowry will have to check them out. Do you know a supplier? Barry Doxy, thinner than a ruler, closer to the work. Yep. John Lowry, not all their tapes have it. I'm in New York, USA. Okay. Let's uh, check what we've got going here. I think that's basically it for the tape measures and the rulers. They're, you know, you use them to measure stuff, and some of them got a bit of gimmicky things about them. Uh, I don't know if anyone's actually got it perfectly right as to what what you want, but you know, I guess they're all restricted by size and uh, and 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 different functions that they're aimed at. More gizmos you put on a tape, the more likely it's going to break. Okay. Okay, there we go. Joseph, mate, tapes can be like old girlfriends. Some <laughs> you love, some you ditch. Well, I'm thinking about doing what Stuart's done and putting a, a uh, little piece of hoop iron maybe along one of the cabinets up here and hook them all on. And so they're all in one area in good vision. So every time that I put a tape down, I can go back to it. I know where it is. It's on that point. It's just a matter of training myself, I guess, so that uh, I, keep, I keep putting things away. I'm doing all right with the rest of the workshop. I try and put things away there. Uh, where are we up to? Okay, let's sw I'm going to swing the monitor around now. And because I want to sit down doing this part for two reasons. One, I'm not feeling great. <laughs> and the other reason is it might be easier to see what we got over there. I think we're doing okay. And I'll get a spire up. Bring this other camera around. Now, I'm not going to do it so that you can see it actually via um, the camera. So, oh, sorry, via software doing it on the key on the um, screen. I'm going to sit down here and have a camera come in close, as close as I can get it. And we'll swing this around and you can see the setup that I've got. So swing that back just a little bit to there. And I think that might be all right. Uh, what about the Bricky's tape? I was looking for one when I was building a courtyard wall. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Bricky's tapes are fine. I'm just making sure also I haven't killed the sound because I'm leaning on things over here. Keyboard. All right. Tapes get lost in drawers. Yes, they do, Ken. Zane, don't forget to put your sign up behind you. Here we go. This is for, for Zoe. How's that? That going to work all right? Ha! <laughs> uh, it was lovely of her to do that for me. All right. Um... Hi, Oscar. Uh, wait, no sympathy. <laughs> Self-inflicted. Uh, all good, Dave, with sound. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Janice Kenwell's tapes get lost all around the house. All right, here we go. I'm going to try and go to the other camera now. And I'll move this over here a little bit further. Move that one down out of the way that way. <laughs> I'm moving things around at the moment so I can see them. You won't see it quite yet until I switch the cameras over. Okay, I think, I think I'm just about there. I'm going to open up a spire and you should be able to see that, that screen. Oh, I better switch the cameras. Here we go. Transition. 
and get Aspire up on the screen, wherever it is, there. Now, I need someone to let me know if you can see that all. Can you see it where it says down the side here, Aspire and the setup? And I'll just wait a second. Dave, it sounded really loud and excited today. What happened? Mm, too, too loud. It's a thing called Australia Day. I'm just waiting for someone to let me know if they can see all of that. In the meantime, I'll... Um, I just want to find a new one. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's all good. Excellent. Thank you. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the corner here and you can see up here it says create a new file and it's thrown up a screen and this particular one is 800 millimeters by 800 millimeters. As I say, we're, we're like God at the moment, looking down. Can see left of screen, but not sure of right. That's fine. Writing small and screen on an angle. Well, I'm sorry about that, David. Is that any better? Let's see. All right, so the main thing is that you can see this area here. I'll jump back onto here to see that it's looking like it should be there. There, that's a whole lot better. All right. So we've got um, up here, the job is a single-sided or a double-sided. I've never used double-sided. This is basically for when you flip the piece over on the bed and you work from the other side. Okay. I've moved it so you can see the side menu now, I think, John. All right. Excellent. Okay, good. So this is the width. This is your X, not the X factor, but your X um, axis. And this is drawing across this way. And the Y is up and down. It says height here. So you can, it's very easy to relate to. Thickness is Z. This is when we go over to the other side to work on the tool paths, not in the drawing section. So we're just setting up a, a blank canvas at the moment and uh, putting some parameters in there. Now with the, uh, the Z position, that's the actual spindle as it's coming down from above working on the job, we're going to reference everything off the top so it's basically like the router is sitting on the top here and we're going to tell it how far down it's going to cut. So it's like you're doing a plunge cut with a router. You can set the, um, the, the zero and then you can set it to go down maybe three millimeters deep to do some signs or, or whatever you want to do. So it gives me the option of being material surface or machine bed. Gives me the option of inches or millimeters. All right, maybe close the chat no I, i'm going to leave the chat open as well uh if i go back too far if i go back to about there you'll see a bit more but the things you'll probably see out the side here as well but not to worry this, these webcams are interesting to work with all right then also when we start the program up start the machine up we want it to reference from one corner or the center so I can tell it to reference from the middle of the job as you can see here or I can tell it to work from the left hand side and we can put offsets in and all that kind of stuff but you know it starts to get a little bit technical now I'm, I'm going to say I'm happy with single sided I'm happy with this size 800 by 800 I'm happy with the thickness of the timber and uh, you can see the canvas David Okay, cool. And we just say OK. Now we've got a whole heap of little menu buttons down here, which are great. Go back, you lost focus. Blurry. OK. Let's see if it's going to pick up focus now. How's that? I'm going to have a look here, see whether or not we've got focus. Yes, we've lost focus. Here we go. So hopefully that's going to get the focus and then we'll go back again. Yep, 
Is that any better? <laughs> there you go. Hopefully that's better. Hopefully that's better. I'll wait for someone to say yes or no. So we can go back to those parameters right here. So up in the corner here. Probably just reacting to how you're feeling. Okay. All good? No, not good. Oh, that's surprising. It is not good. Okay. If I swing it around here a little bit further, it might be able to lock onto the focus. We're having a stinker, aren't we? That should be okay. Okay, is that, is it focusing now, guys? Ah, oh, dear. All right. That's great, good now, thanks, John. Okay, I'm sorry, there's a little delay be between getting things done here. All right, so we've got all these things, we've set it all up, and we're going to go to these menus here. Now, I want to, uh, I, I want, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to read anymore. If it's good, that's good. Once I've got some stuff on here, it'll be fine as well. So these guys here, this basically says if you want to draw a circle, you can. So I'm going to start off with a square, with a rectangle. This is, this is interesting. So we're going to start off with a square, and my anchor point is bottom left. I want square corners in it. I don't want radius internal or external. I want to tell it the width of the area. And this was very, very handy for me because when I was building the swing set, the inside of the posts was 677 millimeters. And I wanted to create two angel wings. So let's say 678 to keep it sim simple. Actually, let's, let's make it 700 because that would be very easy for everyone to follow. So we're going to make a box 700 wide and we'll make it, say, 700 tall, just to keep it very simple. Now we're going to create an X and Y, a 0 and 0. So it's going to be working from down here. Remember up here? That's where it's going to go from. So I'm going to go create. And so you can see we've got this line that's a 700 by 700 millimeter square box. That's pretty easy. This is a spire, uh, the program's name. Now that we've got that box, I want to close this part and I want to go some distances in here. So I'm gonna draw a circle, possibly we'll go zero and zero on here because I don't want to tell it any coordinates yet. And the radius is 50 millimeters. Let's go 150. And I'm going to say create. And there it is down here. So that circle, you might think, well, wow, that's great, Dave. We've got a circle there. Well, watch, watch what I'm going to do next. I'm going to say now I want a 50 millimeter radius. I've just used this as a geometrical distance, so I know where I'm at. I now know I'm 150 up there. And because I've got snap to grid and all sorts of things up here turned on, it, uh, it will work. So I'm now going to go down there without actually telling coordinates. I'm going to park the cursor on there when it finds it and click it. So now that vector there is what I was after. So now I can close that. And that might, again, look a little bit strange. But what I've got is this is the bottom of the angel wing. This is the internal curve. And then I'm going to do another internal curve this direction. Let me see if I can remember how to do it all. Okay, I could do it from the top and work down. That might even work even, might work even better. Let's do that because it's so quick. 150 and go to the top. Pop it there, and then drop that down to 50 millimeters for the radius, and pop it there, and there. Close it. 
Now, I've got this thing, which is a pair of scissors. You watch this. This is cool. See that shape I've got there? I can now do a radius from there. So what I'm going to do, this is fun. I love this. Um, I'm going to do the, the measure. So over here is, is a little dimension thing. And I'm going to say length dimension because it says vertical, horizontal, angle, and arc. So this is, this, they're really good because vertical will only let you do a vertical line and measure. Horizontal will only let you do a horizontal line to measure. And you notice also it snaps. So I'm going to go length, which means I can lock on anywhere. See how it's highlighted there? I'm going to click on that and drag the cursor down to the center point here. And that will be my radius. It's telling me it's 560.49 millimeters. This is just amazing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this dimension box and I'm going to open up the circle box again and I'm going to tell that the radius is 560, 560.49. See that? Now this, this, my friends, is beautiful. Watch this. That point there is perfectly picked up. So I can now left click on the mouse button and drag it over that dimension line and it will highlight that and I push delete on the keyboard and it gets rid of that. I can highlight all of those guys down there and push delete and it's got rid of those. Well, undo because I took too much. See that? Undo delete and it's come back. So I got rid of the square. So I'm going to highlight those two which hasn't picked up the square and I'm going to click delete. Then I'm going to get my scissors again and I'm going to cut that part and cut that part. And let's see if I can cut that. Can you see the shape of the angel wing starting to come together? And this was just from playing with it. Now I'm also going to get the dimension tool. And I should have really gone from there to there. And it's going to tell me that radius is 665. So I'm going to click the close button and go back to the create a circle. And I'm going to put a new dimension in here for this radius, which is 665, 665.93. And I'm going to go down to that origin point there down the bottom and click that. Now I'm going to go over here and close that and I'm going to highlight the dimension and delete it. And now hopefully I will also be able to get rid of that. But if, you, if it doesn't work, I can, if it doesn't recognize that the vector has joined, but it has, look at that, how cool is that? I can now get my scissors again and cut that one off and it worked. And I'll get the scissors and get rid of that part. And that worked as well. Close that and I'm shrinking it down. So now we can see we have this here. And I'm going to cut this out and create it as one vector. Okay, so I'm going to get the scissors again and hopefully that will go without getting rid of this part. It did and get rid of that. And now I have this as a vector. So if I click on that, it hasn't joined yet. So I need to get all the vectors to join. And if I come all the way down there, anything within that, that square that I've just dragged up has basically those little pink dots all the way around. So that's all the, the vectors lines, but there's a few vectors in there. I want to join them all together. Now there is, I think we click J to join. Selected vectors. There's six open and I've told it the tolerances of one millimeters. I'm going to click join. And I hope now that is all one vector. If I click on one part of it, see what happens. Yes, that is all one vector. Now that is so cool. This means now that I can tell the CNC to go around the outside of this and cut this part out.
Now that wasn't too hard, was it? When we go to full screen, it focus, the focus is better. Um, source at last joint. Yeah, yeah, so there you go. Uh, how about we go over to, we'll leave the drawing section go. And we're going to go over to the other side. We're going to go over to toolpaths. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to have a look down the bottom here, see if it can see it. I think it, I think it can. You'd have to let me know. All right, it's not, it really isn't hard. It's just the hardest part is getting over the, the phobia of it and thinking, look, if you can use easy drawing, easy programs like Photoshop or um, uh, what else? Uh, little, little photo programs from Microsoft, you know, if you, or even on your phone, if you've got a program that can do things out of focus, John. Okay, we're going to swing her over here. That should pick it up. because I've got these, these guys over here now. Let me know before I keep going. We've still got about 15 minutes to go, so I've, I can hang around and wait. How is, how's everyone else's week been? Did anyone else make an idiot of themselves like I did on Australia Day, or was I the only person in Australia that was a turkey? Okay. Um... All good now. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So now over on this side, this is what's called toolpaths. Now I want to go around the outside of this vector. So that's one of the other scary things. What's a vector? Well, a vector is basically a shape or, you know, a, a line, a, a path that we're going to ask the, the tool to follow. So down here, it's going to let us remind me, it's going to remind me what I'm doing. So on the CNC, I use clamps to hold these things down, the piece of timber down onto the board. And the clamps are around about eight millimeters thick at the top. So I've told it the safe area, the height above the board that I'm cutting is 15 millimeters because it happens. You know, you smash into things and you lose cutters. It's going to happen. I lost a few. It happened on the show once, remember, that smashed in through a, went straight through a screw, but that was a different reason. It's telling me the thickness of the board, so I know where that, and where the, the, the datum point is. This is where the machine is going to start from. So, yes, it does work on Apple Mac. Uh, David? <laughs> yeah, I think I probably need to have a few mates. Now, I'm going to ask it, to work the profile toolpath. Now, when I open this, it's going to show us a couple of interesting things. So over here, you can see there's a green dot. That's where the tool is actually going to go to to start the cut. Now, you can see here, the start depth is going to be right on the top. That's where it's going to start actually cutting, but it's going to have that safe height of 15 millimeters above the board. So it'll, it'll drive over to, the machine will come over to here and it will go down to that point already spinning and that's how deep it's going to go on every pass. Now I can tell it how many passes and so this is where I select the tool that I'm going to use and this is a, a 3 8 spiral up cutter. Now being 3 8 I had to tell it even in inches uh, a decimal way, so 0 0.375, because 0.125 of a millimeter is um, is an eighth, as we all know, and so three times that's 0.375 of an inch. And down here you have the step over. Now the step over is how far it's going to step over for the next pass. If I wanted it to cut out a whole heap of stuff, now that's probably not making a lot of sense. But say this box here was an area I was going to get the machine to trench all of this out so this was kind of a dish. Well it would start in the center and it would go around and go around and go around. Every time it comes back past the start point it steps over 
78.7%. You can tell it to do whatever you want. I can you know, increase or decrease, but you just set it up to whatever you want. It's much like when you're mowing a lawn and you're going to make sure that you've still, the mower's going over part of the stuff you've already cut so you don't get it, you know, the, a kind of a line everywhere. It, it works better this way. So I think that's going to make sense. This is the RPM, so it's 12,000 RPM that I've got this, this set for. On the machine, I can adjust it straight away. I can tell it to increase speed or de decrease speed in another program called Mac 3, which actually runs the machine itself. Um, okay, so, and the plunge rate is 0.3 of a uh, meter a minute. So it's 300 millimeters every minute. It will, it's going to plunge down as I'm doing the cut. So that's, that's basically it. We'll leave that there. Uh, then we come down here. So I want to go around the outside of the line and it can tell me conventional or climb. So it's, there's my starting point. And it's going to go this direction because remember the cutter is turning this way. So it's going to cut into the board. If I was going as it's going towards, if I told it to go the other direction and it was cutting, you get a, end up with a really furry cut. You want a nice crisp cut. So you've got to go what's called conventional. So it will go around the outside anti or counterclockwise. Okay. So there we go. That's, that's what it's going to do. And then I can add tabs to the toolpath because once it's all been cut out, I don't want this piece of timber to go flying across the room because if the router collects it and bumps, you know, psh, gone. So we add tabs. So I'm going to edit the tabs and I'm going to put in um, four tabs. And we'll say add them. And you can see here they've popped up all around the place. Now, that's a really bad place to have a tab. So I would get rid of that and put it there. And I would get rid of that one and I would put it there. And this one I would move to there. So it's, it's really easy. Now these are around about two millimeters thick at the bottom of the trench. So the router is going to go around. It's going to go down, cut, and it's going to lift up a little bit and keep going and then down again on the final pass. So before you, you might have seen that it's had seven passes. Up here it says seven passes that I wanted to do and it can tell me how thick each pass is going to be. So this is fantastic. As I say, it's just a matter of playing with the program a little bit. It's, you're not going to kill it. Just enjoy it. You can download as, as, a, uh, as a trial if you want, I think. Can't see what you're doing. Okay, can you see it yet? I'm hoping you can see it. Uh, all right. Well, um, I reckon with the more text there, you should be able to see what's happening. Sorry, David. Anyway, uh, what I will do is I'll, I'll do another dedicated video to, to how to do something like this and throw it up as a, as a video. Because when I use Snagit, the focus is perfect, but I, I haven't worked out how to use Snagit with this program right at the moment. Okay, thank you, John. All right, so you can set the passes, you can do... The final pass, you can do really, really um, thin if you want to. You can. There's a whole lot of things you can do here. It says, says set last pass thickness. I could go uh, 0.1 of a millimeter thick on the last pass if I really wanted a super clean finish. So that's it's great. Then out of there, uh, add ramps. That basically as the cutter's coming in, it's going to go in slowly or it's just going to plunge straight down so if you add ramps you can tell it to do it in one direction or you can tell it to zigzag as it's going down uh, and the angle that it's coming down at okay so then i'm gonna yep that's that's right so now i'm going to tell it to calculate all of that and it's telling me I've told the tool to go down 42.5 millimeters because I want to go half a millimeter through the job to free it. I'm going to say OK. No toolpath generator for current parameters. Check the tool can fit the selected vectors at the machining depth. OK. It's, uh, it's thrown up something else there because I've done something wrong. Uh, calculate it again. OK. No toolpath generator for current parameters. Check. Tool can fit into the selected vectors. It can. Oh, it's, it's having a look at the other things. All right. 
Let's have a look here. Get out of there and we'll just select. Let's see if we can select one or two. It's, it's got them all. And what I can do is I can shift it across and say, righty, oh yeah, I've got it all. It's, it should work. And go back to there again. And it should calculate it. No, nope. for some strange reason, it's not doing this part right at the moment. So I will close that and go to there. And because I'm up at a larger, I'll just close it. Um, let's see if it's going to tell me how long it'll take. Machining time, it's not going to show me anything there because it's the wrong vector. Hold on, what we'll do is we'll get out of this one. Nearly time, I'll open up a previous one that I've done and you can have a look at that. I'm not going to save any of that. And we'll go to the large angel wing that I did yesterday. So that's, that's the parameters and we can go over here and double click that. And again, tell it to calculate. And we know that that's happening. And there we go. So now I can tell it what type of timber it's going to be. I could go to material color. Let's have a look here. Go to pine, go to walnut. Light, I can go to brass, which is pretty amazing. I can go to granite. Uh, what else have we got? U. Hold on, that was brass again. U, walnut. Oh. Nice, nice bit of walnut. And now I can slow it right down. And I say, I want to preview the selected tool part. So it's going to cut it out for me. Now that is amazing. I love it. So now it's going to get to a point where it's going to step over the... Um, not step over, it's going to leave the, the tabs. You can see the tabs here. And now if I want to, I can turn the whole job over by left clicking and just dragging sideways. And I can see the back of the job. Which is pretty amazing. All good. And if I want to have a look at it again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it back to the Z axis up here and it'll flip it over as I'm looking straight down from above. So that's pretty amazing. I love it. Do you have to have a BAC below 05 to operate? I've got no idea what all those letters stand for. Um, Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to shut down Aspire. And I'm going to say, no, I don't want to save any of the changes. And we'll go back to there and back to this one. And back to me over here. Move things around because it's about time. We'll switch the transition over there. There we go. Okay, now my apologies for today's show being very slow and quiet. There's some things there that I guess I guess it might have been best to, to leave out, but I'd already done all the promo stuff for the show and I thought, no, we can struggle through. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, oh, blood, blood alcohol content. Okay, yes. Uh, to operate a CM. I, well, look, if you're talking about the CNC... I would not have alcohol at all. This is a this is a serious machine. Uh, same as if I'm using the dingo outside the excavator, or any any power tools in here. I no, I. There's no way I'd come in here, and drink alcohol and then operate any of the machinery or even the hand tools. Uh, I will come in here and have to sit down, and if I'm doing a tidy up, I'll have a beer. Not a problem at all, but. Uh, there you go. So next week, as I say, this week, if you're um, current or ex-Army Australia, 
jump into that competition. I don't expect to have a lot of people in there, so you're probably a very good chance of winning. Uh, as I say, because it's such a specialized uh, prize. And then next week, when I've uh, recovered it a little bit, we'll talk about the, um, the starter sets for the Stanton bench being donated by John at Yellow Box Shed in Australia and also another one for the States by Luke through TBDCNC. I think that's his company's name. I just know him as Luke, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. Large drink of water and a sleep. I, I, may, I may do. <laughs> I may do. Uh, it was a mess. Anyway, you don't want to know the details. Um, I'm sure if you're my age, you've been down that track maybe once or twice. Uh, I've probably done it a little bit more than that, but not to brag. Okay, so thank you very much for dropping by and uh, hanging out with me while I uh, prattle on. And uh, Ken, your name is on the scrolling text this week. I'm sorry I missed it last week. I got it. It's actually written in the description box below. If you went down there last week, it was still there. If you haven't subscribed to my other channel, please do so because that's where all of these shows go to. I archive them all. They go over to the other channel. It's got around three or 400 subscribers at the moment. I want to get it up to 1,000. Of course, once it's at 1,000, I can have little ads appear on the side and it just makes it worthwhile for me to do it. At the moment, it's just uh, I do it for the love. That's all. <laughs> that's all. Uh, I'm going to do another quick read. Uh, Stephen Lee, Jack Daniel is not my friend. Uh, Brian, good show, Dave. Now go rest, Dave. You're a bit dusty, but thanks still putting the effort in. Have a good one. Uh, look after yourself. See you next week. Thanks, mate. All good. Uh, Barry, I will have a drink with you. <laughs> uh, Stephen Lee, thank you, Dave. Always good show. Thank you very much for that generous statement. I shall see you all next week. Uh, where are we? That one there, this one here. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, keep on coming back. Click the thumbs up if you feel it's worth it. Uh, maybe you won't be doing too many thumbs up this, <laughs> this week, but uh, good on Australia Day. And uh, there you go. I had this little thing here. I don't know if anyone realized that it's a little Australia coolie. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.